Hey, this is René. Welcome back to another video on this channel. And today we will talk about um, candle patterns. And we will write a program or a function that can identify candle patterns. So um, in this first video, I will make two or three videos, I think, about candle patterns. We will have a look at the hammer pattern. So this is a really easy candlestick pattern. That's why I want to start with this one. And um, I already googled the hammer candlestick pattern and you can see here how it is built. So um, it is really easy. So wait, let's have a look at this. So you have like this uh, very small body of a candle and then you have a um, really small or no upper shadow or wick or how they, however you want to call it. So at the so above this um, uh, candle body, there's like nearly no uh, price action. And then below the body, you have a lo long um, shadow. So this is um, the hammer formation. And I think there is also like the opposite when the long shadow is like above the body. I think there's also a name for it, but... Um, I'm not really sure. Candle pattern reverse. I think there's there's another name for this, um, <clears throat> but I'm not really sure uh, how it is called. Yeah, but um, maybe it's just inverted hammer. I don't know. But we will have a look at this hammer first, and then we can also have a look at the inverted version. So if we have a look at a like a real chart, we can also identify hammer patterns here. For example, um, at this bar we can see exactly what I described before. So we have like this very small upper shadow, then we have a body, which is like not too big, and then we have this really long lower shadow. And this is a perfect example for a hammer or hammer um, candlestick pattern. And the signal is usually that after this pattern, the market should move um, upwards pretty much because um, I mean, what does this hammer mean? It means that the price started somewhere here, then went all the way down because we have this very long uh, lower shadow and then went up again and closed at the top of this candle. So this is why we assume that the price will um, then from this point, um, yeah, we will um, go into the direction where like the, the candle closes. And this may work, this may not work. Um, this video is mainly about yeah, identifying this hammer pattern with an automated program. So let's have a look at this. Whenever we write a program, we should um, click IDE in the upper left corner or tools and uh, MetaQuartz language editor because this will open the language editor, which we can then use to write um, programs. So... Um, we will create a new expert advisor for this. So in the upper left corner, click on new and then provide, um, click on next and then enter a name, maybe pattern uh, detector. It doesn't really matter how you call it, but it should, it should make sense to you at least. And this is um, the program that we just created. Let's delete all these comments and properties because we do not need it. And in the end, your program look like this with only these three functions left. And first of all, we will write a new function to identify these patterns. So we can say um, we create a function with an integer return value. So important thing, whenever you create a new function, you do it outside of any of these existing functions. So you cannot place it in the body of the onTick function or in the onDinit or in the onInit function, but you place it, for example, at the very bottom of your program um, at this like empty space. So you write, first of all, the return value of the function because every function can return one value. And this will be our um, trading signal. So either a positive value for a, a long signal, long hammer signal, or a negative value for a, a short hammer signal. And then we say um, uh, get hammer signal, for example. And then you always write, if you declare a function, you write these um, parentheses after the function name. 
there can be parameters in these um, parentheses, like we see it here in the onDNet function, but they can also be empty. But either way, you need them, because otherwise the program does not know that this is a function. Then you have this curly bracket directly following, and you have another curly bracket which closes the body of the function. And if we compile this, this works. So this is the function that we just created. The error is just there because we said that we want to return an integer value, but we do not return anything. But if we write return zero, for example, here, um, then the error is gone. So this is a fully working function already. So in our onTick function, we could call this. So if you write get hammer signal and compile this, this works. And I can already activate this program in the chart. So if I go to my MetaTrader, on the left side, the Navigator, if I open this Expert Advisors drop-down menu here, I can click on the Pattern Detector and I can activate it. And it is now running on the chart. And we already execute this function. I can prove this to you because I can say print um, <clears throat> hammer function executed, like this, for example. And you can see that this now works and we execute the hammer function. Of course, if I remove the function call from the onTick function, it is not called anymore and we do not see this print message. So it is important if you create your own function, like this get hammer signal function, you have to put it in some of these event handler functions here because otherwise it is not called at all. But um, since the onTick function is called by the system, by the MetaTrader, we can use this onTick function and put our own function, the getHammerSignal function, in the body of this onTick function. So whenever the onTick function is called and processed, it will then call our getHammerSignal function. So let me rearrange the brackets here because this is how I like it a little bit more. <clears throat> so all we have to do now is put some code in our get hammer signal function. So, and this is, for the hammer signal, it is not really that difficult because if we have a look at this hammer again, we will just have to check like the high of a candle, the open, the close, and the low. So first of all, we need these four prices. And the easiest way is to get them using um, <clears throat> the I high, I low, I open, and I close function. So we can create a double variable, which is pretty much any number that has a decimal point, <clears throat> and we call it high, for example. And then we put the return value of this I high function into this high variable. And the I high function is part of the MQL5 framework, and we can use it right away. And this function returns the high price of a bar. So we can have any bar in our chart and get the high price. So for example, for this candle, it is 0 0.89878. And we can now say what specific bar we want to receive this high price for. So we say the symbol, it shall be our chart symbol, which we can get by writing underscore symbol. And then we have to define the period. And here we can say period current, for example, which is the current chart period. And then we have a shift value. <clears throat> and it always makes sense to use one here because we cannot really use the current candle, which would be shift value zero because the current candle is still um, changing. So we can only define if it is a hammer for the previous candle, which is index one because the indexing starts at the right side with zero at the current candle and then goes like one, two, three, four, five, etc., etc. So if we choose the last finished candle, it is one. And we can do the same thing for the low. If we write I low and the rest stays the same, we can do the same thing for the open with I open, of course. And we can do the same thing for close like I close, and like this. So if we compile this, this works. And we now always get, I can print this and show it to you. We always get the high, the low, the open, and the close for the previous bar. So if we print it, um, 
it should appear down here in the in the experts journal and you can see these are the values in the data window here for open high low close for the last bar so um, the first is is the high so you should see it here and the second is the low which is this value and then we have open and close and these are exactly the values for the previous or for the last bar so this is working now we will have to bring some logic into these values so we will have to check um, first of all we can calculate the um, uh, first of all we can check if it is a green or a red candle because this has an impact on our calculations so we can say if open is smaller than close then we have a um, uh, a red candle right so then we can check <clears throat> Uh, no, we have a green candle if the open is smaller than the close price. So we can just compare these two values using an if statement. So we write if, then we have a condition, and then we have a body of this if statement, which is only executed if the open price of the previous bar is smaller than the close price. So what we can do here is we can then check if um, high minus close because this is the distance like above the um, the candle body. So, for example, we have a uh, a hammer a hammer here, and it is like this distance, like from from the very top of the candle to the close price, which is here for a green bar, for example here. So this is like the distance, and. Um, before we do this, we can check the complete candle size because the candle size is just the high minus the low. This is like the candle size. So we can check if the, the distance from the high to the close price, which is like this upper shadow, if it is smaller than the candle size multiplied with some factor. For example, if it is a maximum of 10% of the complete candle size. Because otherwise the upper shadow is just too big and we do not um, want this candle as a hammer anymore. So if this is true, then we can check like um, the next thing we should check um, the size of or the, um, the ratio of the body and the long bottom shadow. So we can say, for example, the bottom shadow should be at least like 50 60 70 percent of the of the complete bar so we can say if um, open minus low is greater than candle size multiplied with uh, 0.6 and in this case we want to return one because then we have this um, uh, and then we have a green so we can we can write a comment here green hammer formation and we can do the same thing or a similar thing with a red hammer formation but in this case we have to adjust it just a little bit so we can copy this block we can copy it paste it here and because for a red hammer formation the open is always above the close price of a candle because that makes it red right so we can check if the open is above the close then we can check if um, the high minus the open in this case because the open is above the close is smaller than candle size multiplied with 0.1 and then we have to check if the close minus the low is above candle size multiplied with 0.6. In this case, we still return 1 because it is a buy signal, but it is a red hammer formation. Or in this case, we can return 2. I mean, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Now, let, let's keep it like with, with 1. Um, okay. And now we can also for example if we identify this um, hammer we can uh, 
print something or we can uh, create an object in the chart. So we can write another function, create object. Um, and in this function, we want to create an object. So we can say um, we need some parameters for this function. So in this case, we will add the parameters here after the function name in these round brackets. So we can say we need the time and we need the price where we want to put this um, uh, object. And then we can have a uh, object code, what this is, or error code. I will explain this in a second. But first of all, um, we will create a name for this object and it is a combination of these three things here. So we can write um, object name. It is, for example, we can say signal, add, and then we have the time string to, oh, wait, let me, let me put it. Let me use the um, string concatenate for this because this is a function that can be used to combine several strings. So we can say in the object name variable, we want to put these values. So we write signal add. Then we have the time and the price. And we can say it like this price, we round it to the amount of digits, and then we have the error code. Um, yeah, we can write the code maybe in brackets, like this. So this is of um, our object name. It is just important that it is unique pretty much for this signal. And then we can check if um, um, if we can create an object with this name in the current chart with this object name, which is an arrow object, at um, the main window, at the time from the parameter and the price from the parameter. So if we are able to create this specific object, then we want to modify some of the um, uh, some of the object um, properties. So we say object set integer and then we can say the chart ID is zero, the name is object name and then we can say object prop um, arrow code and then we say we want to update the arrow code with this arrow code from the uh, create object um, function parameter list, right? And now we can use this create object function here, create object, and then we can say, we want to create this object at the current bar. And um, in this case, we need the time of the current bar, but it is really easy to get this time because there is a function for this, of course, which is called iTime. So we can say, we want it for the current chart symbol, for this current period, and from the last bar. So we say we create this object at this specific time, at a specific price, which is the low of this candle, because we want the arrow to be below this candle. And now we can provide an arrow code. And um, the arrow code can be found in the documentation, of course, if you search for um, object property arrow code. And then you will find it somewhere in this list. And then um, uh, arrow code. Oh, okay. You cannot wait. Let me. Um, okay, you cannot use this, but you can um, search for windings because this is the entry with all the arrow codes. So here you can see a list of valid arrow codes and you can see like the um, the object or the, the the picture that it creates for example we can choose an arrow that is pointing upwards that would be for example arrow code number 233 
and we can choose this arrow code and paste it here. And we can get the same thing here. So if we write our program like this, and if we try to run it in the strategy tester, we should already see a result. So open the strategy tester, and you can open it by clicking on View Strategy Tester. Then you click on Overview, on Visualize, and then you can choose any expert in your MetaTrader 5. And in this case, we of course choose the Pattern Detector. So now we can run it in any chart, and we can see if it creates some arrows for us. So let's um, run this program real quick. And hopefully, hopefully we can find some of these hammer signals. And yeah, you can see it already draws a lot of arrows here. And wherever there is an arrow below a candle, we can see like that it is a hammer signal. And we can also see a lot of these signals do not work, but some of them, like the last one, work really fine. And this is how you can create this like hammer pattern detector function. And the great thing is, because we created it like this, you can use this uh, function in any program. So later on, we can write a uh, expert advisor that trades like these um, pattern formations. Um, but first of all, let's work on the create object function a little bit more because we can also provide like um, a color for this uh, object that we create. So we can say error code and then we can say color. And we can say object set integer. And then we copy this line and we say object prop color. And we choose the color from this parameter list. If we compile now, we get errors, of course, because we will have to provide the colors. We can say color green, for example, and color green, like this. So this is working. Now there are some more things that I want to um, change here. First of all, I want to add some parameters for our get hammer signal um, um, function. So we say um, ratio upper shadow and we say ratio lower shadow. And we can say something like maximum ratio upper shadow and minimum ratio lower shadow. And we can now use these things here and exchange them with a hard coded like 0 0.1 and 0 0.6. So we can say uh, max ratio upper shadow here and min ratio lower shadow here because this will provide more flexibility to this function, right? So if we compile this, of course, we get another error because now we have to provide these values 0 0.1 and 0 0.6, for example, or anything else that you choose here if we call the get hammer signal. And now there's one more thing that I want to do because I want to copy this again. And let's search for like these inverted hammer signals now. Um, so we say green hammer by formation, red hammer by formation, and we say, say green hammer cell formation. And uh, afterwards we will write the, uh, the red hammer cell formation. So for this, we still check if the open is smaller than the close because this is a green candle. But now we do not check if the high minus the close is uh, smaller than candle size multiplied with this max ratio upper shadow. But instead, we check if the low, uh, no, sorry, we check if the open minus the low is smaller than candle size multiplied with max ratio upper shadow. And here we check if <coughs> um, the high minus the close is greater than candle size multiplied with min ratio for the lower shadow. Or we, I just realized we cannot choose upper and lower shadow because for the cell signals, for the cell formations, it is like the other way around. So we will have to write something like max ratio... Um, 
short shadow and long shadow. That's that's more accurate. So we say short and long and long shadow. So we say short and long shadow and we say short and long shadow like this. And now since we have a sales signal, we want to use arrow code 234 and the red color, right? And we want to return minus one from our function. And then we copy this block and say we want a red hammer cell formation. And in this case, of course, the, the close has to be above the open. And we'll have to exchange some of these things here because we now have to write close minus low and high minus open like this. The rest can stay the same, I think. And if we run this program now after compilation again in the strategy tester, we should now see buy and sell hammer formations. And the buy hammer formations should have a green arrow now and the red uh, and the, the, the cell hammer formations should have this red arrow. So what we can see here, it seems to work like the, um, the arrows below the price are green and the arrows above are red. Oh, the arrows above <laughs> are not placed at the right direction. So let me have a look at this again. Of course, we cannot choose the low here, but we will have to place the uh, red arrows at the high of the bar because otherwise it looks a little bit weird. Yeah, this looks better now. But yeah, you can see there are a lot of hammer signals. But if you want to, for example, um, have less signals, you can always go ahead and say that you only want to have the um, arrows or the, the hammer signals that have only 0.5 uh, or, or only 5% um, short shadow and maybe at least 70% uh, long shadow. This should filter a lot of signals. So we get really, really um, uh, um, yeah, we get a lot less signals here. So let's speed it up a little bit. Yeah, now you can see oh, we still get a lot of signals. Okay, yeah, but these are always valid signals, I think. Yeah, you can see we get less signals, but we still get a lot of signals because I think there are just a lot of hammer signals. But you can see some of these signals would have worked like really good. For example, this one or this one. And this one would have worked, worked really good. This one would have worked really good. This one would have, would have worked at least for like... The, the next uh, candles, um, and some of them do not work, of course. But this is like for every signal, and you would have to build a expert advisor on top of it and check if these signals um, yeah, work on average or if it is a, a, a losing system. But it always depends on several factors. Okay, so this is how you can write your um, function to filter all the hammer signals. And there's one more thing um, that we could do here for this create object function. This is a preparation for the next following videos because we can have a, a text that we can add at um, above or below these uh, arrows here. So we can say, or maybe, um, yeah, let's, let's try this first. So we can say object name description and then we can say object name plus text like this. And then we, whoops, then we can, yeah, we have to take care of this later. Then we can try to create a um, text object here. So we say object name description And then we say object, um, I think it is a text now, and the rest can stay the same. 
but make sure to exchange these object name variables with the object name description variables because we now want to create a description and a text um, object is like the name says, just a text in the chart. So what we can do here is we can say object set string and we can say we want to set object property text to the text from this uh, parameter list here. And the color can be the same, but we should, yeah, let's have a look at this first. And I think we should change the price later on, but we can have a look at this and have a look, um, yeah, yeah, how it looks. Oh, first of all, we will have to provide this text parameter here whenever we call the ob uh, create object function. So we can say hammer, for example. And we can copy and paste this for every function call of this create function. Uh, yeah, create function. So let's run this again, because now we should not only see like the arrow, but we should see a small description of the signal. And it will say hammer. So this will help us if we build um, multiple uh, signals into our uh, program. Yeah, this is working. It's looking a little bit ugly because like the worst, uh, the first letter of this hammer is uh, in, in, the, in the arrow pretty much. Uh, so this looks a little bit ugly, but um, after all this, I, I think this is beautiful to me. So yeah, we, we can work with this for now. Maybe we can say, um, as a text, we will add like um, one space before this text that we provide as a parameter. So if we run our program again now, we should see that like this hammer description is a little bit um, has a little bit space to the to the arrow next to it. So let's uh, wait until this test is loaded. And yeah, this looks a little bit better. I think it depends on how far you stretch the chart. Oh no, it always looks good. Okay, so I think for now we can leave it like this. So this gives us all the hammer signals and it is looking absolutely beautiful. So um, yeah, this is it for now. Um, so let's have a look at this one more time. Uh, first of all, we have these three event handling functions. We only use the onTick function to call our get hammer signal function. This is a function that we created here. So this is the signature of this function. We have a return value, which is integer. You, we do not need this right now, but we could use it later on if we want to trade these hammer signals. So we already prepared this integer return value. Then we have um, the get hammer signal uh, name of the function and then in uh, uh, in these round brackets we have two parameters which is the maximum ratio 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 for the short shadow and the minimum ratio for the long shadow and since i removed this n we will get a lot of errors but i will fix them and then we have um this line to get the time of the current um, bar, we will need this to create our uh, arrow and description object. And then we get all the properties for the last bar, which is the high, the low, the open and the close price. Then we calculate the candle size. We can do this by just subtracting the low of the candle from the high. And then we search for green hammer by formations. Of course, first of all, we check if it is a green candle. Then we check if like the uh, upper short shadow is smaller than the complete candle size multiplied with the maximum ratio for this short shadow. And then we check if the, if the lower, the big shadow is um, at least the minimum ratio multiplied with the candle size. If all of this is true, then we create an object and we return one. And um, we will have a look at this create object function in a second, but first of all, the red hammer by formation is nearly the same, but of course we do this for a red candle. And then we have the green cell formation and the red cell formation here. So in the end, we will have the create object function. And this function has a longer list of parameters. These are the um, things that we need to uh, 
define the object, like the time where it shall be uh, placed and the and the price. And we need the error code to say if it, uh, to say if it is a buy or a sell arrow and then we have the color so green can be chosen for buy signals and red for sell signals and we have the text to say that it is a hammer formation for example and then um, yeah we, we just create an object name for our arrow and then we check if we can create this arrow and if we can create this arrow we change some properties and then we do the same for the um, description which is a text object so we create another object name variable so make sure to understand that these variables are completely different variables um, only because the value in these vari variables is similar doesn't mean that it is like the same variable these are completely different variables and it is important because every object in a chart has to have a different name and then we create a text object yeah which just just says that we um uh, that we found a hammer signal and this is our program like really neat really small and it works to identify hammer signals so this is it for this video and the next video which will be a little bit shorter i think because we can use all of this infrastructure we will have a look at um at another candle formation pattern so make sure to subscribe if you are not subscribed yet and leave a like if you like this video and the knowledge that you um hopefully uh, uh, got in this in this video. So um, until next time, have a great time and good trades. Bye bye.